Hello, today is the 8th of December 2020, and I'm going to do my medium mystic reading on Prince Rogers Nelson. Now, leading up to this reading, I have been reaching out, so to speak, um, and doing my homework, kind of putting out the message to Prince's Spirit and asking permission by doing readings and seeing if he's agreeable. Um, and I got a very positive indication, so I thought, okay. Um, the understanding is that as with all my mediumistic readings, I try to just give the platform completely over to, for them to say something that, or to try to convey, and if, and if I'm, you know, able to grasp it and convey it well, um, they can just use the cards to be their storyboard and I will just uh, be their interpreter, so to speak. Which is generally how I read the cards anyway, but when you're dealing, when you want to try to do a mediumistic read, you know what, it really is worthwhile to reach out and say, is it okay? Um, you have a chance at, a, I think, a much tighter, better reading. Um, and it's just respectful. So without further ado, let's um, connect, make that long distance call, so to speak, and maybe not so long distance, but in another dimension. I believe that he exists now. <clears throat> and with an enhanced understanding and perspective that comes uh, as one is in the after in the next world. So I want to give Prince this platform to convey whatever he wishes to convey and share whatever he wishes to share and that that is that. I will um, try to be very accurate as much as I can and careful and I ask my spiritual helpers, my ancestors, Prince's Spirit, um, and the Creator to assist us in conveying what Prince Rogers Nelson would like to convey to us and share with us. And we give um, gratitude and thanks to the spiritual sit for the spiritual assistance and to Prince if he's willing. We'll we'll know or not. And I will share with you just a, a little story as I connect to Prince. Um, I know uh, a handful of, of people who are in the entertainment industry, some of whom happen to be um, people that are sound engineers. And I know personally two sound engineers that, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, I'm, I'm not trying to name drop or anything, but this is just kind of um, a little insider thing that I can share with you that gives you a, maybe a insight that wouldn't terribly surprise you, but uh, he is a perfectionist. He goes through sound people or Boy, it's hard to not think of him as still here. Um, he went through sound people like, uh, again, one goes through changing their, hopefully, uh, their socks. You know, it, it just, it, he was a perfectionist. He knew what he wanted. And it, the insider joke was, how long will you last if you are a sound engineer working for him? So I know two different ones <laughs> that work for him, and um, dude was a perfectionist, knew what he wanted, uh, didn't, he was, 
uh, definitely very much larger than life. He was also very shy, but he, you know, once I think he got to know people, he would open up. Um, but when it came to business, no, it, and, and his work, he was, as you know, very, very, very serious. And so sound people were, it seems, something that he liked to switch out pretty regularly. And I had a chance to see him in one of his last tours before he started, I think, more declining with more pain. And, and, and um, I didn't get the chance to do it because it was in San Jose and um, I was asked at the last minute. And I, I couldn't, when you're disabled, you, you can't just be always so spontaneous. Uh, you have to have a little bit more time to arrange things. <clears throat> And for me, uh, it was during the, the, a weekday, and my <clears throat> I would have needed my husband to drive me down there. And I just couldn't do it, and I, I was so sick to my... Because uh, I wanted to see my sound engineer friend, but I also really wanted to see Prince, it, 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 maybe a bit more. <laughs> and I couldn't do it, and of course I regret it to this day. Ugh. I, w I would have been in the sound engineer's booth watching the Prince show. Oh, ouch. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Prince. We are going to use the Marie Palmer Common Threads Oracle Deck. And I found this on Etsy. It's one of my favorites. Many people like it. Prince in before I started this before I turned on the camera and I was setting up <clears throat> I, I mentally asked him which set of cards he'd like to use and um, this one popped up in my head I went oh okay so I'm shuffling and we are connecting to Prince who also has a very interesting astrological chart. Um, just real briefly, get this. He has Sun in Gemini, Moon in Pisces, his rising sign is Scorpio, and his mid has midheaven was Leo. And I just want to check his Mars real quick. His Mars, oh, is right on the cusp uh, between it looks like, oh, Aries. Woo, I have Mars and Leo, but anyway, it's in just in within 30 degrees of Aries. All right. <clears throat> definitely opinionated, definitely. A lot of dynamic energy. Okay, so Prince, what do you want to share with us? Peace. Truly a beautiful deck, isn't it? <clears throat> Sorrow. Spiritual guidance. Every time I use this deck, I, I realize why I love it even, I love it even more. Emperor.
looks like Jeff Bridges. I wonder how he's doing. Sorry. Well, that emperor is, I think he's, I'm feeling like this is the issues that he had with his dad. Now, as you know, I warm up, so to speak, on a topic, usually by reading a couple of times on it. I just like to see a pattern. And um, that's what I've been getting in my warm-ups uh, with an entirely different set of cards. <clears throat> with just regular tarot. This isn't a reg this is an oracle deck. Um, and so it's interesting that again, I get the card of a very um, of a situation with I, I feel like a strained situation with his dad um, but it feels to me like he's indicating that they have been working it out and his own issues of it affected his own issues of I think the husband. Um, so I have picked up, and we know that he had issues with his dad and wrote about him in the song uh, Doves Cry. And again, I get that feeling that his relationship with his father was critical. And there was a problem with his father showing him paternal love. It's just what I'm getting. <clears throat> and I, I think it... <clears throat> was just... For somebody as sensitive, that that sense of his father's kind of lack of acceptance was very injurious, as I'm getting, to him and his own uh, life as as a man, and and um, I believe as a husband, as that that how he struggled with relationships. I think he was a very, from what I understand, a very loving man, but there were issues, very deep, painful issues that he had trouble to face. Um, especially after his daughter passed. Uh, that was very hard. And I'm getting that as part of this here. No. Getting the card of no. And if you look at it, it is putting your hands over your ears, not talking, not seeing. There's a lot of denial here. And it does fall under the card of peace. He didn't have peace in his life, is what he's saying about this issue. With, and, and I believe on the other side, <clears throat> again, that is being worked on. There is, I feel like there's an intermediary uh, working things out between he and a father figure, his father, I believe. 
and um, I feel that his father made him feel like he wasn't heard, that he couldn't voice an opinion, and that his perspective was invalid. So it created a lot of sorrow in his life. I think it's also a what this feeling of not being able to express his opinion honestly, I think was an issue he had with his father. He could not feel like he could say what he think or felt. He there's very much a feeling of children, you know, are to be seen and not heard, maybe even not seen. But there's such a strong sense of denial and censorship that he was not at peace with. And that created a problem between he and his father. Um, he felt very much like he, uh, I, I think he felt that no matter how good he, no matter how he excelled, no matter how many awards he won or whatever, there's always this sense of maybe not quite being accepted, that you're still... Um, not valued enough to have an opinion or to, or to have any valid input. So I can see why that would have been like a problem. And, and um, I believe that I'm, he had love for his father, that's why it would hurt. But his, his own father's issues and issues with his ideas, I think of to toxic kind of a masculinity, um, were a problem. And maybe that's why I'm sure his dad couldn't completely understand that. And I feel like Prince's... Um, more feminine nature that he would bring in to, which was hot. I mean, so cool. He was just one of those incredibly gifted people able to do that. But I don't think his, he's saying that his dad, I think there was a problem with start from start to finish now, we've been told, but we really, I, I get from him, you've been told, but you really don't know the extent of it, how deeply it affected me, if, if I was giving Prince a voice. Um, inner vision. This sorrow, I think, also was a catalyst to creating... Um, Dove's Cry, much of his creative work. Notice the eyes here. And I'm feeling with this, this is his, what was in his awareness and, and consciousness. And there's a real, such a strong sense with, with these eyes of, of how he felt. I know that might sound funny, but I'm, I'm just getting um, how deeply it hurt him, how deeply a wound that made. And why he, I believe, sought to rise above and to, in some way perhaps, capture some... Um, approval that he was elusive 
to him from his father. I think that's really one of the things that drove him um, and made, I think, someone who was already a perfectionist even <clears throat> more driven to the point of being a bit neurotic about it. Persistence. And this comes under spiritual guidance. I think his spiritual belief and what, you know, I know he was I believe very much involved in Jehovah Witness, right? But not my jam, but this isn't about me. He needed that in his life because I think it helped him to deal with a lack of self-confidence, can you believe it or not? that I believe, or doubt, um, of course performing would also have been a big boost to confidence and esteem, but I'm also shown, as we know, Prince was a very spiritual man. Um, whether you can relate to the choice of the means by which he identified um, is, you know, another point, but he needed spiritual, an anchor in his life, and he really had a strong, I feel like, connection to his spiritual guidance. They really had to work with him, too, persistence. That comes under them. I also feel like Prince himself, I think, was someone who, if he took you in under his wing, you could totally confide in him, and he would guide you very, very um, much close to his heart. He was just so sensitive that bringing anybody in um, was a big deal because he often ended up with a broken heart or it just hurt him very deeply when things didn't work out. And I feel we are shown that. Resilience. His father, the situation with his father, he's saying, created his drive uh, to perfect his skills and abilities. It was a catalyst, again. Also, to reinvent himself and to become his own man. He could, uh, I, I think he realized that becoming his father's man wasn't gonna work. So, the reinvention thing also is a was, I think, a necessity for him to reclaim uh, I believe his own strength to draw from because he didn't have I believe something that really mattered to him which was his father's approval but this 
made him nothing but more persistent and resilient, and he didn't give up. And that is what he's saying. He had this inner vision. I believe he was also, as we, if you may or may not know about Prince, um, one of the reasons... I think he claimed that he was healed from, was it asthma? He had a condition. And he felt, I believe I've read this about him. If I'm wrong, correct me. Um, that spiritual prayer or assistance helped him to overcome it. And I'm actually shown it probably did. Um, because I see a really strong spiritual, actual spiritual presence outside of dogma, outside of anything, despite whatever you believe. We, are, we have beings that are there. And so I see them there. They really guided him through his sorrow to do with his dad and helped him to channel it into creative works. Although I, I do believe in aspect it was trying to, again, you know, um, prove to himself and despite perhaps not wanting to feel like he needed to prove something to his dad, also to him. But more perhaps in at the end of the day to himself. He realized that his, like I'm saying, his drive and his perfection um, created him to become a better, stronger, amazing artist. However, at the cost of a great deal of very deep sorrow within himself. Moon. Now, his moon is in Pisces. My moon is in Pisces. Yes, it deeply emotional. He's saying, I am, I very deeply, deeply felt and feel very sensitive. He himself, well, I got off track. He himself, um, I believe also would receive dreams, visions. I know that was the, uh, the part of the healing. I think he did receive a dream or there was something along uh, that kind of line. Um, and here I feel like I see that activity as well. And it was it was truly coming in in a benevolent fashion to help him deal with his sense of, I believe, rejection from his father. Uh, and in the way of rejection of, as I've been going on now, this isn't good enough, that isn't good enough. It just feels like his dad, no matter what he did, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, kind of thing. And because I don't think he could be the person that his dad wanted him to be or approved of. That was not who Prince was. So despite loving his father very much, it caused a great rift, I feel like he felt, where he wanted to be close to his dad, he couldn't. But this drove him uh, to become extremely independent and there for himself and I don't mean that in a in a selfish way but like you know I don't have my dad to pat me on the back and say you're doing great son um, here's an idea because I understand that his dad had uh, a connection to to music yeah, so, you know, Prince's dad, he bounced, his mother and father divorced when he was 10, and he bounced back and forth between his father and his mother and his stepfather. Now, his quote-unquote stepfather, uh, his last name, I think it was Baker, he, he would take him to shows and stuff, um, but... Apparently, yeah, he, he was struggling and he would go back and forth. And then 
he was living so he was living with his father for a while and I, I don't know what happened but um, I'll have to look that up see if I can find out why but his dad kicked him out and I think that this was a very remained to be a very painful situation that kind of haunted him throughout his life. So that's a, what I just wanted to share with regard to to his dad and the and the the father situation in his life. I knew there was something more, but um, okay, that makes a lot more sense. We have wisdom. And I get that it's saying that his sorrow caused him to look inward. And I believe it also helped him to mature skills Again, there's that sense of, look at the eyes. Um, I just get the feeling he was a very, he was actually a very perceptive young man. Despite this card of, so especially someone trying to tell him, I feel like his dad was old school typically and was trying to make his, expect his son that the only way was to do it the way his father was. But that's a pretty, pretty common problem, I, I think, between parents and their children. But this was a little different. Um, this, this is what caused him to, I feel like, to look more inward for, within himself and toward a spiritual source for strength and confirmation, um, most definitely. And it helped him, I believe, to become so so uh, proficient uh, with different instruments and upon the, the base that he built from childhood. You know, he went to classical training. Of, I think, of, well, I don't know if it was piano or, or what, but um, he was more classically trained and this was... I'm sure, aided him in his creativity. But in his pain, he reached out more to a spiritual source to get through difficult times. I'm, I see that. He's indic indicating that. And we get the lovers... The final card we get struggle. Yes. You know, it wasn't easy for him. Um, I don't think we really fully appreciate this. And it would be hard because we're not him. Uh, as much as we can empathize. Um, big emperor resilience struggle so he really I think struggled where the issues of his father and fatherhood were concerned. I think it scared him. Like when he got married and um, their, the child that he had, I, I'm, forgive me, I, I'm forgetting her name. Um, 
that was devastating to him. I think that his, it's easy to say that the problems with his father and this bouncing back and forth, the masculine role model was problematic for him. And he, it's not that he gave up, he tried, but it was a struggle. He really struggled. And he didn't stop trying. But it was like dealing with his, I think, and I, I'm getting, there's parts of that within myself, and I'm getting that this is from his, he's talking about his dad, that were a lot like me it and I didn't like that that you know how you can when you get older you do it say oh my gosh becoming my parents um, I think there were some tough things within himself that came up that he struggled with and then saw some he I think he was very concerned he didn't want to be that way but I, I think there was some inner struggle because he did have, it's hard not to be. He tried to be conscientious of it. Um, here we have the, the spiritual guidance and again, the aspect of using and, and what appeals, I believe, the, the resource of spiritual guidance to deal, especially with his conflictual feelings around love and paternal love and being paternal because he himself was exceptionally sensitive and I think actually quite paternal but so sensitive that um, it was very difficult for him at the same time the lovers this also I feel like goes into his relationships um, his love relationships and looking at that he's also re receiving help with that because there was I'm, I'm also getting with this persistence card here of a pattern that existed within his relationships so we see him on the other side working out the issues that he had with people in his life. He's indicating that and that there's intermediary help um, and that I believe he's saying he's very devoted to this work that he's doing on the other side to heal these relationships and that part of himself which he was not able to heal while in a body in human form um, during uh, his incarnation and he is now looking to bring peace to that deep deep part of his emotional nature that that side that was so hurt that felt denied all those all the, his life that is what again drove him um, because he felt denied but now he has wisdom and he can look back at this sorrow from a place of wisdom he has the emotional support. It's still difficult, but he's able, I believe, to see choices, to see how relationships worked and didn't work. Um, his own strength and persistence and resistance despite this very affecting pain, wound, with regard to paternal issues and his connection to his own father and fatherhood men in his life his 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 stepfather as well okay a couple extra cards for prince 
marriage. Yes, he's bringing that up. He had problems. Ah, and the sun. So the spotlight now is put on marriage. He learned a lot, I believe, from his wife, his first wife. How many, I'm not sure how many times if, if he was only married once or, or or not but I I again I can see her face and I, I she's she's the mother of his child that um, the daughter that that I believe she was unfortunately stillborn or she may have miscarried something I there was very unfortunate magic so I believe we have here now that Emperor card also speaks to living by your own rules um, so Prince had to cre create and live by his own rules he couldn't have trouble to live under the authority of a father that I, I think um, he didn't feel like accepted the route that he wanted to go or how he expressed himself creatively. He learned, he's saying that he's, he learned a lot through marriage and by looking at um, the spotlight here is on marriage by looking at it of his parents and his own comes under a bright light and he's learning a lot about how I believe patterns are acted out and This is him reflecting on marriage and I believe not only his own but that of his parents and what would be, you know, what takes to make a, a, a long-term relationship. Now he understands better, apparently. I think with the way he was brought up, it clouded and made it hard for him with relationships for himself. I get a yes card, an affirmation, new life. So he had to, again, recreate himself. Uh, he had to, as he wasn't accepted, he really had to go out there and, and do it himself. Definitely shows that. I also feel like he is showing us that yet on, in, in the dimension that he's existing now, He's still, you know, he's working with his dad and on things and through the pain that didn't get resolved in this life and that this, we don't just stop and cease existing. We continue to grow and learn um, just in a, from a different, we, we get a different perspective because we're not in a physical body. And I feel like he really now feels like he has been able to, through that lifetime and now on the other side, really begin to heal these issues. These were significant. Mother, and he also had, you know, nurturing and transformation so I, I, I feel that he 
and now feels completely supported with unconditional love by the universe and he is able to transform because he did a lot of hard work in his life here on earth um, with regard especially to his dad that was the, the I think the huge huge th part that affected every other part of his life for the rest of his life is what I'm getting it, it just really kind of haunted him and he has now been able to I think take that weight off and is working on taking that that um, healing that wound and working things out so I could go on and on <laughs> but I will stop here because we are nearly at this is going to take a long time to upload I will continue on um, but I think it's fascinating what he shared I thank Prince I'm getting an urge to draw just a couple more cards. Yes, he's talking about nurturing, taking care of yourself, and joy. And how much lighter he feels. I often get this with people that have passed on. It's like, I feel buoyant. I feel better than I've ever felt. So not to worry about him. He is fine. And he is in the most loving, supportive place. Uh, th so that he can heal and grow and learn from the lifetime that he experienced as Prince. And I hope you like this. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And maybe let some friends know if you think that they would be interested in my content. Thank you so much. And this has been a pleasure, if not a bit lengthy. But Sometimes good stuff is worth a little longer video. And the people that matter and that love Prince, I hope you appreciate and found this interesting. Thank you. And thank you, Prince. Thank you, Spirit. See you in the next video.